Hi, this is Dennis with Battleborn Batteries, and it is my extreme pleasure to be here with legendary angler and Zen master, Mr. Rick Klun. Thank you so much for being with us, Rick. Yeah, well, I appreciate it, and you're so welcome to the Bryant Creek Valley here where, where we live, and it's made it very convenient for me, and it's very comfortable here. And uh, I met you at the Classic last year in March, and uh, immediately I, I felt a connection, and we'll try to explain that connection, hopefully. <laughs> yes, the feeling is mutual. And we're, we're here just a little bit outside Ava, Missouri, at Rick's house. And I want to say it's kind of a bizarre time right now because... Uh, we've been dealing with this pandemic now for almost a year, um, but the pandemic has sort of brought out some interesting things out of humanity, I have to say, since since we've been sort of uh, hunkered down and at home, it's forced us to f focus on some things maybe a lot of people wouldn't naturally focus on. Can you talk a little bit about what's that, what that has done for your field? Yeah, I've obviously been in the outdoor field being a, an angler, a guided for you know 15 years and I've been fishing competitively for now for 43 and and it's because that's my passion I, I love the outdoors and I uh, the worst I worked for Exxon Oil Company uh, for seven years for the second largest computing center in the world and I loved it. it but it was in downtown Houston it wasn't in the outdoors but really what I really appreciate that they gave me a promotion as programmer and stuck me in this little bitty room but they had no windows and so that gave me the courage to quit and start my fishing career. And I, like my dad said, he said, well, son, that's what you want to do, fine. He said, but you're going to starve to death, which I did. <laughs> uh, I lost pretty much everything real, real quick. But at the same time, similar to what's happened now, even though I was failing by economic standards and what I was doing at that time, I liked myself more than I ever did because I was out in, in the world that I felt better in, and which was the outdoors. And I'm seeing that a lot right now with this pandemic is that the boating industry, which uh, I've worked for for now over 30 years, they usually take a real bad hit in these times. Uh, but this time they didn't. It's, it's almost like everybody says, okay, all right, what's important? And, and I learned a long time ago, I quit giving my daughter's Christmas presents because I hated the way they tore through them and threw them over their shoulders to get to the next one. And, and finally I said, I'm never giving you another one. And I never did. I gave them one present a year. And, and what I gave them was, the first one was rafting the full length of the Grand Canyon. Because I started thinking, what presents could I remember as a kid? And I couldn't hardly remember one single present. And, but I could remember the camping trips. I could remember the hunting trips. I could remember all those outdoor things that we did. And I said, they may not like this rafting trip, but they will never forget it. <laughs> and, uh, and that's kind of where it's, my career has led me to understand better and better. And when I first met Dennis, immediately one of his statements to me was his passion about you know, nature and becoming more sustainable and doing off the grid type things. And, and uh, most of the sponsors I've had in the past were, were endemic fishing companies, outdoor companies. I said, and all of a sudden, here's a company that really we didn't consider endemic, but, but boats have four batteries in them, so it, yeah, it made sense but for obvious reasons. But my main reason, that's the short-term benefits, is the, the benefits that that gives me as an angler, a competitive angler in my boat. But the long-term ones uh, I'm more interested in is what uh, Dennis's visions are how this will help the planet we live on. Yeah, well, I I want to talk a little bit about when we met at the the Bassmaster Classic in Birmingham uh, earlier this year. Battleborn Batteries had a booth over there, and we had a bunch of pros in our booth. And I I left the booth to go get something to eat with uh, Darius Arbery, one of our pros. And as we went up the escalator, I saw this gentleman coming down the escalator in his gear and these shades looking really cool. I looked down the escalator and there were all these kids that were just like watching him come down the escalator just in awe. So I turned to Darius to ask him who this guy was and Darius looked like just watching him in awe coming down the escalator the same way. So Darius explained to me this was a very special guy. Not only 
was he special in terms of the championships that he's won and his presence in the sport for so many years. But there's also something a little bit different about Rick Klun, and it was the relationship Rick has with nature, the relationship he's had with the fish. First of all, you'd win tournaments in the East, in the West, it doesn't matter where you were, and you would acclimatize yourself to try to picture or feel what the fish felt or what nature was like. Can you talk a little bit about your, rela your specific relationship with nature and how that's helped you excel in your sport? The acclimatizing was kind of not necessarily an accident, but uh, when I went broke, uh, I couldn't afford to stay in rooms, so I slept in my car, or I slept in my boat, and uh, and and then. But I learned there was value to that. You know, it was like my all my other competitors would go, "How in the world can you stand? It's 28 degrees this morning, and you slept in in your boat last night in a bedroll." And, uh, and I go, well, I said, let me see, it's gonna get up to 60 today. You stayed in your motel room, which was set at 72. It's not gonna get better for you today. It's gonna get a lot better for me today from 28 to 60. But anyway, yeah, I kind of got some reputations there by accident, but then I also learned the value of them. Uh, the value of them was that your body's an incredible instrument and it, it can acclimate to, to all kinds of conditions and weather. It's like being in shape for anything you do sports-wise. Unlike football and basketball which require three hours of extreme energy, ours is 10, 12 hours that we have to have energy to withstand extreme heats, extreme colds, rough water. A lot of people don't take that. I hit over a million waves that I can comp compress my spine a year. And so you gotta be very conscious of, of not doing that the wrong way, or, you're, or you're, you'll be finished. I fished with Dallas Cowboys uh, football players and, and, not, and basketball players and professional baseball players, and never once have they ever got out of the boat and goes, I've never been so tired in my whole life. <laughs> so, but that, the value was too, was that if you go out all day today in these woods and we walk around, you will, start be, you will slowly start to become part of it. And, but if I go back to the room every night, like on the lake, then I would revert back. You'd li be listening to the negativity of the news or something like that, and you'd revert back. Uh, so I'd lose a little bit, but if I stayed camped out, if I stayed outdoors, I, I would become more and more in tune with the natural rhythms. I could feel the conditions changing. Contrary to what you think, it's not the rational mind. Like Einstein said, he said, all my theories of relativity and my you know, physics did not come from my rational intellectual mind. It came from somewhere else. And I've been searching for 43 years at somewhere else. And, uh, and I realized that that's even more important in fishing. Fishing is the last remaining vehicle for the masses to have that connection. And that's why more than me just winning tournaments and catching fish, it's so important for me to keep people, the masses, give them this vehicle that they can go out and, and re-establish that connection that we've lost you know, over time through a modern day materialistic society. Yeah, that's interesting. I think that's, that's kind of where we align here, even though we're, we're very different right. Right. people. We have very, very different backgrounds. But one thing that you said um, that really struck me was that um, if you really understand something, then you're more apt to want to protect it. And the thing about fishing is, as you said, in your view, this is sort of the last way that we can really become one with nature, that man can become one with nature because of you know how we live our lives these days and technology. Um, but it is critical that we, that we protect nature, that we protect the planet. We protect it for our descendants, for our grandchildren. You're absolutely correct. What, we, what man historically, unfortunately, does is what he doesn't understand, he destroys. Slowly we've been disconnected ourselves from the most important thing we have, and it is what we're part of, and it's nature itself. You're encouraging a different lifestyle with, the, with, with these batteries that allows us to become friendlier. All of man's controversies in history despite these things we hide them behind, have been over 95% of them are over our resources mm -hmm. that we're using up. And, and by using them up, we're changing the world. And so much of that brief conversation we had, I had the feeling, yeah, we're all, we all have to meet our economic requirements to be a viable, but at the same time, can we do it in a way that's helping the place that we live, and more importantly, our grandchildren are going to live. 
Yeah, I think it's, it's interesting how technology has brought us to this point where we've lost touch with nature. But at the same time, we need to rely on technology and on science and kind of bringing us back to the point where we can live with nature sustainably. That's the key word. And we hear it, and unfortunately, man doesn't tend to react until he's in a catastrophic situation like we are right now, that we'll, we will start to react in positive finally go, okay, wake up, we gotta react and we gotta, we gotta, there's, there's an answer to everything. And we're to the point where, you know, the United States is, is very fortunate that it still has a, a, a decent amount of resources. The rest of the world, has, a lot of it has run out. And so we gotta better figure out a different way of going about it. Right now you've been using 300 amp hour battleborne batteries in your, in your boat for trolling. Um, but on top of that, you're also using the batteries in your camper and you've got some solar on your camper and you're actually living off of the sun and using the battery um, as backup in order for your house batteries. Maybe we can talk a little bit about the the extension from well you're using them in your boat but you're also living them uh, using them to live off of on the road. Where are we going to go from there? Well that's what I'm trying to learn. Uh, I, don't know, I wish you would have been around early in my career, Dennis, uh, <laughs> because I used to go out in my boat, practice all day, don't come back to the bank, sleep in the boat at night, practice the next day, and sleep in the boat that night. Don't ever go back to the rooms or motels or camping, whatever you were doing. And, uh, and back then the batteries would limit your ability to do that because I have to use a troll motor battery all day long, you run it down, then you don't have a troll motor. These batteries have actually, your batteries I've been doing that with, now I'm not staying on the lake all night, but I'm not charging them just to see how much life I can get out of them because a lot of times we're getting real poor charges when there's a hundred boats at a motel or something. And so you need that extra energy in there. Uh, I've heard stories this year, man, my batteries went down at noon, and I, you know, and I, I, I lost all my mobility, which is critical in, in tournament fishing. And the COVID has kind of made this even harder. It's the longevity of these have really really been good for me and that's the key word for me it's given me more freedom to do things without having to be attached to the umbilical cord of modern energy i think people need that right now they need to think how can i be self-sustaining you know myself it's great to talk about sustainability as a country what defines us is each one of us has to do that for ourselves first and then then it catches on and i can't wait to get opinions on how I can be moved further along in that direction. So what do you see your role as, as an angler, as a sportsman, in terms of um, convincing other people outside of uh, the sport to kind of live that way of life? It's going to be my actions. How am I doing it? The people are going to look at me on social media and say, well, how are you doing it? How are you going about making these changes? And so, and I, so I, I got to educate myself to, to do it better. I've got to get better. Just being exposed to Battleborn uh, gives me that opportunity. I want to take it as far as it will allow me to take it, but it's going to be my actions. I can't just talk about it. We definitely want to be on that road with you, and we want to, we want to help you live that life, but also uh, publicize that life. You've yeah. obviously got a lot of folks that are kind of living off-grid and using batteries and solar and whatnot to achieve that freedom that you're talking about. We're definitely on board with you there. I think you have a unique platform because of your background as a legendary sportsman. I mean, I think that you actually, you will say things and people will listen to you more than maybe us. America has this relationship with an individual that has credibility and that's been the most important thing to me in my whole career is maintaining that credibility versus corporate America. We, we have some great corporations, I work for some, but America doesn't trust corporate America. And it's, it's, so you need these individuals that do have credibility to help, you know, say, hey, yeah, they're a good, they're a good company. Mm -hmm. they're, they're telling you, you know, giving you good information and stuff that you can improve your life and hopefully those around you. I, I appreciate that because it takes corporate America to, to bring these sorts of things to the oh, masses. Yeah, definitely. It, it takes people like you to really give credibility to it. We appreciate you. <laughs> That's your level of expertise, and you say you've never fished before. I might be able to teach you a little bit of fishing, and you can teach me more about the, the lithium batteries. I think I'm going to have to take you up on that, actually. <laughs> it's a plan.